Well, I had ran into Big after we had did a show at the, was it the Muse? I'm not sure, it was one of those conventions they was having, rap conventions, everybody was in town, and I remember he performed that night, and the song he did was Party and Bullshit. And I always liked the nigga shit. Uh, my man Dan Smalls put me on to him. He was like, yeah, listen to this, it's an artist. You know, he under Puffy on, you know, that Uptown shit, you know what I'm saying? He's like, Puffy starting the bad, ooh, pardon me, Puffy starting the bad boy, label. check this dude out, I heard the party and bullshit, love that. Then I heard the, um, me and my bitch, out of here. It's like, this kid is fucking ridiculous. So, long story short, we spoke that night at that show, and he approached me, he was like, yo, you know, I want to do a song with you. I'm like, hell yeah, what the fuck? My man Ray the Ruckus had already told me, if you ever get a chance to do a song with that cat, Biggie Smalls, do it. When I ran into him, he said, you want to do a song? Next thing you know, we're in the studio. Got it done. I had no idea I was going to be the only guest appearance, though. Because, you know, a lot of cats was feeling big back then, you know what I mean? From the party and bullshit, from his freestyles and BK and all that. But, you know, he, he reached out to me. I guess, who knows? You know, maybe he reached out to other dudes and they ain't answered the call quick enough. Who knows? But, yeah, I'm the only guest appearance on that, on that first album and shit. What it was like in the studio with him. He was a funny dude. He made me laugh and shit. Me and Puffy played torture a little bit. It was all orchestra. Yeah, torture. It's a game that we play. It was on the first Wu album. We went like, torture, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We played that a little bit. Uh, Tracy Waples orchestrated the whole movement. Shout out to her. And, uh, yeah, it was real cool in the studio. We both sat there and wrote our shit at the same time. Wasn't no ready written, none of that shit. We both sat there, wrote our shit down. Easy Mo was there. Easy Mo B did the track. Got it in. And you know, him and Puffy had their little banner back and forth, because Puffy was like, put my name in. He's like, nigga, your name on half the album. You on most of the fucking album already. Yeah, that was kind of funny and shit. But it was friendly shit, brotherly shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that was that was the experience of that right there. Well, I remember the ride there, because I was playing some shit for my um, first album that I recorded. You know what I mean? And Tracy was feeling that shit. That one right there, we did that in Daz's house, in his uh, studio, in his basement. And Rage was on it at first. Pop came home, he needed to put an album out, so you know, they was looking out for the cat, which you're supposed to do when you're dealing with family. Yeah, Pac, you need that, we gonna give you that. And he heard the joint, he felt the verses. Me and Red Man did, he put it on there. Kudos to Tupac, a lot of love for it done. Word up. And um, shit was rocking, he was playing that shit in New York. Wow, which is unheard of, cause you know, that little bullshit going on. No, I wasn't against East Coast rappers, and that's where the ball got twisted at right there. He just had a little gripes with Bad Boy. Bad Boy didn't have any gripes with anybody, but you know how that shit goes. Somebody wants something with you, it's like you're gonna stay on your guard, regardless. You know, a threat is a threat, but it's still a threat, you know what I'm saying? And um, when the media got a hold of it, they made it the East Coast. West Coast thing, and I don't want to say any names about any magazines, they know who they are and shit, when they did that cover, that was some fucked up shit, because they put niggas in the crossfire, you don't, you don't shove some shit in niggas' faces, there's a lot of, there's more real niggas out there, no, it's more fake niggas than real niggas, but when, by the time the shit get to real niggas, somebody die, man, real shit, man, and I, and I, and that's the dilemma of this whole shit right here, where you gotta sit back and analyze shit, and take shit for what it is. You know, you can't read about it. You gotta see that shit nowadays. There's so much shit going on now. It's like, you do something five minutes later, it's on somebody's blog, or on the internet, on YouTube, and you know, it's crazy.